Hi guys and welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Um, today we're really quickly going to run through five tips and tricks for Revit phasing. Um, our first tip and trick revolves around temporary works creation using phases. Our second one is how to organize the project manager by phase. Our third one is phase mapping and linked files. Our fourth tip is around phasing and groups. And finally, our fifth tip is about demolishing the external finish of a wall to prepare for an additional finish to be added. Um, stay tuned for the duration, and if you have any questions at all, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Thanks. Hi guys. So very quickly, we're going to talk about how we can show temporary works for demolition and enabling works drawings. Um, yet again, when it comes to phasing, people misunderstand the function of phasing in Revit. The idea is you do not need to create an independent timestamp for demolition works, enabling works, or even temporary works. This becomes particularly useful when you have a an existing building that certain spaces need to be maintained as live spaces while construction work is going on elsewhere. You can represent the hoarding very comfortably um, you, using temporary phases without having to create independent timestamps in the phasing dialogue. So as you can see on the phase two here, we have our proposed uh, expansion of the production space here and we have the wall that we will be demolishing to accommodate that um, but what they need to do actually is keep this section of the existing production space live during the project so they want to create a hoarding that will wrap from this side and across and down and um, between the internal walls as well and the idea here is that the hoarding goes up, the construction works take place behind the hoarding, and this place, this space in, internally stays live without uh, uninfected, essentially. So the first thing we do is we will go into our phase two drawing, and we'll actually create the walls that are representative of the, the hoarding that we want. So I press WA to bring up the wall dialog, and I'm just going to go down and select the wall partition here. Now this is going to be a temporary partition that we're inputting. So we have our base constraint as level zero and our top constraint as level one. I'm just going to set that to minus 200 to allow for this kind of a provisional roof buildup. And we're going to draw in the wall as we require it. Now we also will need temporary access through um, these lobby areas. So I'm just going to put in a single door in both instances. We'll set that 300 from the inner walls. So here we have um, phase two walls created. And as you can see, when we select all these objects, you will see that they are created in phase two, which means that they have the same properties as the full phase two works we've developed but what we actually want to do is assign a phase demolish to also be phase two and that means that these works basically come into effect for the duration of phase two only and then are removed so once we select that you will see that they disappear when we go back to our phase two demolition works drawing you'll see that they're also not visible this has got to do with the phase filters that we are currently using. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to duplicate the view with detailing for the phase two demolition works. And I'm going to go down to our phase filters here. And under phase filters, we can show complete, show all, demo new, etc. So here we actually do not have a phase filter that shows the temporary works only. So I'm going to show complete at the moment. You see the, the finalized um, full phases of the project. If I show all, you're actually going to see the demolition works. Here, you'll see the temporary works using the temporary um, graphic overrides, and you'll actually see the full phase two. So what we really want to show only in this instance are our demolition works and our temporary works. So we're going to go up to our Manage tab, we're going to go into our Phases, and we're going to go to Phase Filters. And we're going to create a new Phase Filter, and we're going to say, show, apologies, 
So previous demo and temp. So we can see here that in our new, we're going to select not displayed because we don't want to see the new geometry created in phase two. In our existing, we're going to set it to overridden and that means it will present in the graphic override for existing. In demolished, we're going to select overridden, which means that we're we're presenting the demoed items with the, the, the red hatch and line style that we've applied. And in temporary, we're making sure that that is also selected as overridden. And we're going to press apply. Then in our du duplicated view, I'm really quickly going to name that temporary works. So we don't forget which one we're in. And we are going to set the phase filter to show previous demo and temp. And as you can see, we retain the temporary works visibility here. Now we can change the graphic override settings for this. So it presents differently if we require. And um, typically this will be assigned and set as a standard in, in your templating. But in this instance, we'll just go through it. I personally think that blue is a little bit harsh. So I'm going to use this softer blue. In both instances. And I'm also going to apply the blue there. And that's set to visible. And there we have it, guys. So that's how you present temporary works that do not um, impose on the final output of the completed project. They're basically elements that you apply to the phase that they are acquired only, and then they're demolished in the exact same phase that you construct them in. Um, so I hope that was helpful, and we'll be back with another tip now momentarily. So for tip number two, we are going to look at how we can organize the project browser by phase. So this is great for really large projects where you might have multi phases across very large volumes uh, on, on big buildings um, or maybe a full site development or something like that. So this is very straightforward. If you go up into your project browser on your views um, section here, if you right click, you can press browser organizer organization and then you can go down and select phase. Now in phase itself, you need to make sure that you go to edit and you want to go to your grouping and sorting and ensure that it's grouped by phase and then family and type or whatever way you want to break it down. But this is the way that you can control it and you can set it to ascending, AKA you go from existing through to phase one to phase two or descending phase two, phase one to existing. So it's up to you which way you want to organize it, but you simply press OK. You press apply and OK. And then you can see that you have your views broken down into our existing phase one and phase two. And that's all the views. So you will have your floor plans and your sections. So there you have your existing floor plan there. Or you go to your phase two and you can go to your floor plans and you'll see your temporary works drawing there. So I hope that was helpful and we'll be right back with another tip. So for tip number three, we're going to look at how we can control phase mapping for models that we are linking into our current model. So in this instance, we're going to go to our insert tab and we're going to go to, apologies, I can't see it now. Link Revit. <laughs> that took me far too long. And on desktop here, I have phase mapping. Okay. And um, positioning here, I'm just going to say manual center for the moment because we're not working to share coordinates currently. And I'm going to press open. And you'll see it come into space. So at the moment, I know um, the setter of this is accurate. So I'm just going to move the linked file into position here. So if you'd imagine that this linked file is actually representative of maybe a subcontractor um, working independently, this could be like a little outbuilding or something like that. And um, to, to the subcontractor, they're not working to the same phase scheme that you might necessarily be working to. And um, for them, there's an existing building and one phase and that's it. Whereas here we have two phases present. So what we need to do is map the phases. So we want this to be appended to part of phase two and be represented as it is currently here. But we need to ensure that our phase two is mapped to the new construction phase of this. So on the linked file, we're going to select it. We're going to go to our edit type 
and under phase mapping we're going to press edit and here you can see the existing phase one and phase two of our live project are all mapped to new construction phase of the file that we've linked in so what that means is if we go to our phase one view and we go we can show that we're actually seeing what we want to be part of phase two in terms of the subcontractor design element in our phase one so that really isn't what we 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 are after and the same holds true to the existing view so if we go back to our phase two works we're going to select the um the linked file we're going to go into edit type we're going to go into our phase mapping we're going to change the phase mapping for existing to existing for the linked file and in our phase one we're also going to change the phase mapping from phase one to existing and as the subcontractor design element has nothing present in the existing you will see that when we go back to our phase one and existing views there's nothing there it is only now represented where we want it to be represented which is part of phase two so for tip number four we're going to talk about groups and how grouped elements do not act the same way as standalone elements do when phased ideally when you're phasing a project you want to try avoid groups where possible um, and it's for one very simple reason if you look at this group here we're going to pretend that we have the temporary service riser here in the warehouse for phase one okay so if you look at it here okay this is a single group um identity in revit but if you go into the independent elements of it, you'll see that they're actually created in phase two, phase one, and they're set to phase demolish for tape phase two. We don't want this riser permanently. We only want it for the, the phase it works. Um, and what you're going to see is that these properties do not remain present when the group is copied. The actual group will move to the new phase we move all the elements within it to a new phase once copied okay in that phase so as you can see we have the service riser here and it's copied and when we go to phase two it's not visible and the reason for it is the in each item within the group is set to be demolished within phase two but if we go back to phase one and we copy the group when you go back to phase two you'll see that the copy of the group is actually present in the view so what it did is it copied the actual group and the group elements, but it did not set the elements within the group to the phase um, that was previously designated to the group that it originated from. So if you go into the other group here, you will see that the phase created is phase one, but there's no phase demolished assigned to it. And this is one of the reasons why you should generally try avoid groups for items that you may be removing at a later stage in the project. So for tip number five, we're going to look into how we can demolish just the external finish of a wall and maintain the wall core for applying a new finish to it at a later stage of the project, a later phase. Um, you need to kind of use a little bit of forethought when you're modeling um, and try to identify where this is going to happen, happen because the ideal way to do this is not via parts um, which a lot of people uh, would gravitate towards in the idea of parts is it separates the wall construction into multiple layers um, really the most straightforward way of doing this is in the existing phase where you have the existing wall constructed you want to generate it as two independent walls you basically want to generate it as the core wall you want to maintain and the external finish in this case the 100 mil brickwork that you want to remove um, so as you can see we're in phase one currently and this wall was created in phase one and you can see that we have our 215 block work created in phase one and our phase demolish set to none and we can see that our brickwork is set with the same um, criteria phase created phase one phase demolished none this is one uh, wall as far as we're concerned but in terms of the modeling generation of it it's two walls i know this can cause difficulty in terms of scheduling but um, really the schedules that are going to count most are the ones that are going to be generated from the proposed phases and we can just schedule then the external leaf and give the property saying that it's appended to an existing wall. Um, so that's the way of navigating the concerns regarding scheduling. 
So in this instance, we're going to go into our phase two demolition works. And as you can see, we're seeing the full wall construction here, but we want to make sure that we remove the brickwork for this phase. So under phase demolished, we're going to set it to phase two. And as you can see, it takes on the phase filters um, from the graphic overrides that we've assigned. And you can clearly see that it's assigned to demolition works now. So when we go into our, um, apologies, the phone was ringing there. When we go into our phase two drawing now, you will see that all we're seeing is the existing core wall. And here we can create our new wall type. So we're going to select 100 mil cladding. We're going to say finish face um, exterior. I might have this wrong. And we're going to input our new wall type. And really it is that simple. You can see that our new wall type is created in phase two and the phase demolish is set to none. When we go into a new wall type, you can see that we actually have the buildup of the metal sheeting rails for 50 mil and our cladding being 100 mil deep. And it's that simple. So we have our phase two demolition works showing the removal of the brickwork and we have our phase two um, completed drawing showing the addition of the new um, external cladding that we were looking to add. Okay, guys, so that concludes the video. Um, if you have any comments or questions you'd like to raise or you'd like to see anything else in terms of additional tips or tricks around phasing or you have any particular problems you're, you're coming across, please make sure to leave a comment below and um, it, it might just inform a future video that we can develop for you. Um, thanks for tuning in and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.